Now, first of all, I mean, there were repeated periods in history when people thought that Africa would come and become a prosperous continent and so forth. The strengths of Africa is, uh, are the resources, mm -hmm. the weakness are the population, basically. And uh, we have throughout Africa basically also political tensions. So I'm not sure that Africa will become, it's not going to be another Southeast Asia, mm -hmm. you know, where you have had countries like uh, South Korea, North, North Asia, mm -hmm. Taiwan, and then Hong Kong, Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, oh, this, and so forth, growing very rapidly for a period of time. That is not going to happen in Africa. Mm -hmm. So secondly, mm -hmm. I would like to point out that uh, I invested already in Africa in the early 1990s, in uh, Kenya and also in Morocco. And Miles uh, Morland, he had an Africa fund for the last 20 years or so. Mm. And so it's not something totally new investing in Africa. Okay. Some people have done it actually for quite some time. Mm. But I concede that with the rise in resource prices and the, let's say, supply constraints, the Chinese have uh, developed a great interest in the African continent. And whereas 20 years ago, American trade with uh, Africa vastly exceeded Chinese trade with Africa today, trade between China and Africa is twice the size of the US African trade. Sure, sure. And unlike the US that just goes and it essentially exploits resources and creates trouble, the Chinese they actually go and build bridges mm -hmm. and trains, uh, railroads and tunnels and the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So they actually bring something. They're not the most popular people in South in Africa because the locals suddenly see that some people work very hard and achieve something, mm. whereas they don't do very much. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, w I was thinking before, I mean, if you take an uh, average work day of, uh, you take a person from each country and you look at how <laughs> they work in one day and then you extrapolate that across the population, I can see how you can come up with that. There are some countries that just are not going to reach that level of productivity that other countries have. Absolutely. I mean, you're not going to have a lot of semiconductor manufacturing plants in Africa and so forth. And this is also constrained in many other smaller economies that today, say you are a shoe manufacturer or a motorcycle manufacturer or a car manufacturer, you need the supplies and the industries that come along with the supplies. Sure. And so the wage level is not that crucial, it's the whole industrial infrastructure that is the crucial point in manufacturing cost effectively. Mm -hmm. That's interesting.